get tucked. When I just rotate, it just gives them a feel and awareness of where that face is. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. I wanted to talk today about something that came up a lot on the channel early on. Generally sloppy in a lot of the things I'm doing in this one. Don't like that takeaway. I'm spinning the club, but it, it was a terrible shot. And then uh, has reared its ugly head again. And that's the inside takeaway that everybody talks about. We're at the Windstar Golf Academy, and we just finished three days of the Be Better Golf School with Dr. Kwan, which was a lot of fun. And when we were at the school, a really common thing that I used to do really, really badly, and then I kind of got over it, and then it kind of came back again, is the inside takeaway. So with the school, with Dr. Kwan, what he was saying is that the shift has to come before the turn. And almost everybody at the school was turning first and then shifting later in the backswing. And when you turn first, it gets that inside takeaway. And it's not only bad because it sets up your wrists in a bad spot, but uh, it also, the force pattern is all messed up. So I'll do a video with Dr. Kwan, hit the subscribe button and you'll see that talking about, uh, he calls it the Schoen rhythm. We uh, filmed some stuff at the school about it. But what really helped me get over this inside takeaway was a, a device that I've been using that a friend of mine invented called the Watson Hanger. And I'll show, show it to you in a minute. But basically, if you can do the step or the shift and then the turn and also get the correct wrist angles, that's like the perfect way to get over the inside takeaway. It is really cold right now, as you can probably tell. First of all, like the problem with the inside takeaway is that it sets you up when a lot of people do this. They go like right arm bend and they, uh, they tuck it. So that's what I was doing. I was tucking it. And sometimes, so what I call tucking is basically when the club and the wrist basically goes into extension like real soon. Now the club's kind of tucked behind me and then you make, make it to the top. And if it's tucked, you're going to want to like hit to hit it hard. You're going to want to like untuck it. So this inside takeaway can lead to a flip impact pretty easily. Fixing your inside takeaway and getting the club coming through your hands is kind of the first battle. But then the second battle is then not to let, let it flop to the inside or tuck it later. You do want it to get tucked just a little bit, if you guys understand what I mean by tucked, but you want it to get tucked because of how you're moving your body. So watch when I take it to the top and then I start reversing the energy. That kind of puts this little tuck into the club. Right about here is where it starts kind of untucking. So if you do that tucking move, which is extension and basically supination or rolling this way, if I go like that. So if I do that right away, you're cooked. Almost nobody good does that. Or if I do it, get it coming through my hands nicely, but then I do it up at the top, you're cooked. But if you start reversing your energy and it's kind of the, the reversal of your energy is the thing that supinates it and extends it, then you're in a good spot. And this is one of the things that really helped me with that. So what it is is like for maybe a hundred years, people have been holding hangers onto the club, but this is like uh, actually designed for golf. So it has this thing here. If somebody has an inside takeaway and they first start using this, they're going to make a backswing and they're going to go, oh, that thing's stopping me. I can't, I can't hit balls like this, you know? So no, let's blend in what Dr. Kwan was talking about. So it's a shift and then a turn. So if you shift and then that takes the club back and start turning, then you can see my plane for the takeaway is looking a lot better rather than, I can't see, I can't do it with the hanger on, but rather than this. Basically, if you have a flip, it's, it's happening either right off the ball or somewhere in your backswing. So we go here. Okay, Mike, we're gonna hit, hit a few. So if you get this, what I recommend to do, and this is uh, something that Dr. Kwan was having us do at the school, so take pitching wedge and try to pitch it into these 40 yard baskets. So get a good target. And so my challenge is to take this thing up with a shift first. That kind of leaves the club behind. And then the push after the shift makes the turn. So we go shift, turn, shift, turn. 
and you'll start to feel the impact. If you're used to getting the club tucked and then kind of, then it untucks itself here, you'll get kind of like a, a glancing diggy impact and the, and the face will rotate over like fast. But if you can get your takeaway more like this and more uh, towed or dragged, then it, it goes through the ground like a lot nicer and the face, the face is real stable. The thing about training aids is that I've heard from Dr. Will Wu and some other people who are like real experts and Dr. Tim Lee and some other uh, guys have told me that you really should use training aids like if you're going to use a training aid, you should use it once and then try to recreate that feeling with the training aid t like 10 times with your regular club. Mostly people when they get a training aid, they're really excited to use the training aid. So they use the training aid 10 or, or 100 times and then they try, they say, okay, it's, it's baked in. But your brain is really smart about separating tasks for the things that you're doing. My brain, if I use this too much, it would say, okay, that's the pattern I use for this. Once you pick this up, you're going to go right back to, okay, what's the pattern I use for golf swing? Because that's not golf swing. The challenge really is get the feeling from that and then try to recreate and really challenge yourself to be like, okay, what was I doing with that? So I, you have to, and you have to practice too. This is from doc, Dr. Wolfgang Schollhorn, that was who I talked to from Germany. You really have to practice the wrong thing a lot because that starts helping you identify like, okay, that's wrong, even that's wrong, even that's wrong. I wanna go, okay, now that's the right thing. All right, so I'll go to that second basket, Mike. It's an eight iron and I go. When you're using it, you're gonna do maybe like one ball with a hanger. That was on my forearm way too long. That was good. That was perfect. And then you're gonna do like 10 balls with your regular club. So there I'm feeling it goes back shift turn it goes back and then right about here on like after I've made my transition the transition is the thing that then brings this bar into my wrist and then I basically keep it there through the ball I pin it there with my pivot not with any wrist force so I'm gonna go hey, I'm here with Bill who was one of the teachers at our school with Dr. Kwan and is also gonna be here again for next month's school. And Bill, you were telling me you like the hanger. Mm -hmm. And uh, tell me, like, with your students, like, what do you think it, it fixes for them and, and how do you like to use it? Because everybody uses it a little different. Yeah, I like it a lot because it's, you know, most students are trying to manipulate their face with their hands and then they're trying to just, because their body position's out, you know, they're not turning through properly. So I like it a lot because it really gets you the sensation of on the way down when this thing is on the forearm and that club face is square, you know, keeping it on the forearm and then just having them doing body rotation. It teaches, you know, awareness more of, of squaring the face with the body versus mm -hmm. having to, you know, most players, most people are just hanging back and flipping or oh, gotcha. trying to find trying to find square with their with their hands versus using the body the body rotation to to square the club. So when that thing's on the forearm and that club face is basically square to my back line, when I just rotate and that stays on the forearm, it just gives them a feel and awareness of where that face is because you know a lot of times when you're swinging the club you can you think you know where the face is, you think you feel it, but then you look at it on a video and they're not even close. So this thing riding on your forearm and keeping that pressure on your forearm on the downswing really really reinforces that feeling of where that face is and what their hands look like. So set up to one bill and it's so so when you set up it's it's not on your forearm. No, so not just at all. show me at what point it actually touches the forearm for you. It to me it, it gets it, it gets it on halfway back. So as I oh, okay. as I turn back and, and, and just rotate my body, it starts to get the forearm and then when I go up to the top. Now I'm the I'm a little bit of a shutter, so for me I get the face it's easy for me to get it on my forearm at the top of the backswing. Um, I think you should get it more, more here. So when you're, you know, most people get it back in their toe up, right? They they wheel, they wheel the club open and the yeah. gets toe up, and this doesn't touch your forearm. Yeah. And then they get to the top and it still doesn't touch, mm -hmm. and then they're trying to manipulate right. it on the way down. And I, some some people like me when I use it, like I like over over tuck it, like over bring it in here, and that bar hits me like right away. Right. So that it helps right. with that too. 
I'm more, I'm more, I like to see more people make it back as ever they get. It, it gets a little bit of, it touches the forearm there and the club face is, is basically parallel to my back line. Mm -hmm. And then from there, just finish their back swing. Okay. And then maintain that as they come down. So it kind of lightly touches you here, and then as you make your downswing, it's a little more firm. Yeah. And then you use your body to kind of just square the face. Exactly. Hit one more good one for us. So again, I like to feel it more there, to the top. All right, so it's called the Watson Hanger. It's uh, something that I really like. I'm going to talk to uh, my friend who makes this about getting a special deal for Be Better Golf. But I really like it, and you'll see, uh, once I organize that, I'll put it in the description for this video. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye.